ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Hell ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So for all your tea sipping needs, make sure you guys go on to lovelytea.net or amazon.com forward slash shops forward slash lovely tea. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the video. All right, you guys, so I wanna come on here and just kinda do more talking about the R. Kelly documentary. Now, as you guys, I know I did a two hour live stream on Sunday and it was lit, it was popping. We had over 6,000 people come through, um, lots of really good comments. We were blasting so many damn pedos in the industry, it was crazy. We talked about everything from the abuse of Shirley Temple to the abuse of Lil Wayne and you know, just all types of other alleged you know, pedophiles out there it was a really good conversation and right now that live stream is currently blocked in certain countries you know the comment section is not popping up the chat box isn't working and it's been like that now ever since sunday's live stream so they are definitely trying to you know what i'm saying keep the information hush hush i think we went way too deep in that live stream and youtube wasn't ready for it so they're trying to censor it and it is what it is okay but i want to do an update a lot of you guys wanted me to make a video because we were having a discussion about Charlemagne and Mr. C and how Mr. C basically, you know what I mean? He caught out Charlemagne the God. Him and a lot of people have been calling him out because they felt like, you know what? Why is Charlemagne the God in this documentary? Especially when he's extremely problematic. He's been very disrespectful to black women. And on top of that, he has his own case going on right now with a woman named Jessica Reed who released her own documentary on Charlemagne. So I'm gonna go ahead and read to you guys what Mr. C had to say. Go ahead and check this out. So Mr. C says, Somebody please explain to me how Charlemagne, who's accused of sexual assault, can go on TV and comment about R. Kelly, who was accused of sexual assault. Then he also goes on to say, first of all, let me add at see the God so nobody thinks I'm talking about him behind his back. Second, don't try to deflect the question by talking about my gay activities. Just answer the question. Honey, I guess Mr. C is finally fully out the damn closet, okay? But I love what he had to say. He said, do not deflect. Don't talk about me being in cars with transsexuals and getting, you know, topped off. We're gonna keep the topic on Charlemagne. And he made a lot of really good points. And what also happened since then is that a lot of problematic tweets have since surfaced from Charlemagne the God. And so people started pointing this out to Dream Hampton, who was the producer on the docuseries, and basically acting her, you know what I'm saying? Dream, have you seen these tweets? You know, why did you have him in this documentary? A lot of folks were confronting her about her choice. Y'all go ahead and check this out. I think one of the sickest tweets is that Charlemagne says, at Birdie803, don't ever get high and drunk around me again. I'll sneak some pussy and take pictures. And that was a tweet that he sent out in 2009. So after people started confronting Dream Hampton, this is what Dream Hampton had to say. She says, I'm just seeing Charlemagne's 2010 tweets tonight. I interviewed him before this story about him broke out, but I should have cut him all together rather than limit his appearance. It was a huge mistake. I probably spent more time arguing to cut Bruce. Again, mistake, surviving R. Kelly. She also goes on to say, he was asked because he was so clear and vocal with his criticism and condemnation of R. Kelly. He was interviewed before the story about him broke. I tweeted an apology a few minutes ago explaining. I didn't see this old tweet until I was tagged in them tonight. All right, so you guys just heard what Dream Hampton had to say. So that's one thing that bothered me in the documentary. And if you guys did not see Charlemagne the God's part, this is his part right here where he's basically trying to quote Malcolm X. And then he's also saying that if you want to get away with sexual assault, make sure you do it to a black woman because nobody's going to care. Y'all go ahead and check this out. This is really disturbing. No, I think that was his middle finger to the law. So he was like, yeah, I'm untouchable. Instead of calling himself the Teflon Don, he called himself the Pied Piper. And you know, from what we see, he's, he hasn't stopped leading uh, young girls out of villages via music ever since. The most disrespected woman in America historically has always been the black woman. You know, I always say if you want to get away with murder, kill a black rapper. If you want to get away with sexual assault, assault a young black girl. Really, Charlemagne? 
Really? And then had the nerve to quote Malcolm X, knowing that he himself has built his career on disrespecting black women and going in on black women and even big upping a racist like Tommy Loren. I find that really funny that he said that. And the irony of all this is the fact that he's accused of, you know, assaulting a black woman and nobody else is taking her plight seriously. You know, she came out with a whole documentary talking about this. I'm sure that all these people knew about this story this summer. This story was viral. Several people covered it. Several online outlets covered it. And they still chose to use Charlemagne in that documentary. So that says a lot. So now on top of that, another thing that's also bothering me concerning the documentary is Drea Kelly, okay? Everybody knows how I feel about Drea Kelly. I've been calling her out from day one. And since then, there has been numerous videos of her that have come out where she's basically, you know, talking about her baby daddy and nobody can talk about R. Kelly. She's basically still bigging up this sadistic abuser, okay? And I don't want to hear all that Stockholm Syndrome bullshit because at the end of the day, these videos are not from five, 10 years ago. These videos are no older than 2017. Stop acting like these videos are five years old when we're only nine days in the new year, okay? Okay? This woman is constantly singing R. Kelly songs, constantly posting this stuff online, constantly encouraging people to go to his concerts. I mean, it makes no sense. So people were dragging her because of this. And now Drea Kelly has released a statement via TMZ to address her being in these videos. Y'all go ahead and check out these videos of her talking about R. Kelly. And then also check out her statement once folks started dragging her. Check this out. He's a good provider. I'm going to end it right there. He's a good provider. He's good with his child funding. And it takes a lot to be him, to do what you do, to perform, write, be on the stage, do what he does. So I thank him that my children do live the life that they live. It's because of his hard work. It's because of his gift. It's because of his writing. It's because of his producing. It's because of his performing that we have the life that we do. And I say we, because at the end of the day, I don't pay rent on a separate house. I don't pay bills in a separate house. It's not like, oh, I got a place where my kids stay and they got lights. And then I got another place where I stay and I got lights. We have lights. We have food. We have the lifestyle that we have because he's the vessel through which my blessing has come. That we have because he's the vessel through which my blessing has come. But I'm very clear. God is the source of all. My ex just happens to be the vessel through which it comes because all of it belong to my daddy and I know I'm one of his favorites. So he has blessed me in that way. And I'm not going to take that back. People can say it's conceited or it's this. No, no, it's not conceited. I'm just confident and I know because my life reflects that because all that I have been through and survived, a lot of people wouldn't make it through it. So I got to be one of my daddy's favorites for him to hold my hand and take me through the storm like that and bring me out on the other side. And she ain't got no wrinkles and she's happy. I got to be one of his favorites. And if you don't like it, that's fine. I don't care. Um, but back to my ex, I really respect him because it's not easy. You had to have been hiding on a goddamn rock if you don't know what my ex has been through. But not only was he going through it, me and his children were going through it at the same time. So for him still, no matter what people's opinion of him was, no matter what people said about my ex has been through, but not only was he going through it, me and his children were going through it at the same time. So for him still, no matter what people's opinion of him was, no matter what people said about him, walking into interviews, not knowing what people going to say, when they going to say it, how they going to say it, the fact that he still held his head high, went out there and did what he had to do to make money because at the end of the day, he's an artist. He's a writer. He's a producer. That is his job. No different than if somebody's a doctor. No different if your ass work at the post office. That is still his job. He got up every day. I don't give no fuck what you think about him personally because we're not talking about that. But what we are talking about, him as a writer, performer, artist, producer, people that he has brought their careers back to life. We're talking about from the eyes, he's revamping, bringing back Mr. Biggs and uh, Charlie Wilson, like we gonna be Uncle Charlie and working on that album from Kelly Price to Michael Jackson, Madonna, Whitney Houston, Tony Braxton, the list goes on and on and on. The man is undeniable. But at the end of the day, he had to do all of that with that dark cloud. But what kept him focused and kept him going is I have to do this for my children to make sure that they are okay. Because he could have just went on a rock and hid and shit been in shambles and we be the fuck everywhere. But that didn't happen. So at the end of the day, I love him for that. I will always respect him for that. And he did it with grace 
in the height of the storm. It wasn't no shit like he went and hid off somewhere and then came back. Live. Yes, that is my baby daddy playing in the background. What y'all about? Mm. Turn right to I-285 South. Questions you have passed my test. Happy people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What you thought? I celebrate him and his music and his artistry. He does, we do what the fuck he do. That's right, Reezy. Hey, cousin. Family first, honey. Family first. And you know that special rule about fair. I can say what the fuck I want to say about him because he's my family. You ain't got shit to say. I'm going to cuss your ass out. How about that? That ain't your motherfucking family. That ain't your husband. That ain't your baby daddy. So, you know how that is. Somebody can be talking crazy at the family barbecue. People got to act a goddamn fool at a funeral. Let somebody say something crazy about your brother at school. You try to rip their goddamn head off. Now, you might have called your brother the dumbest motherfucker to walk the face of the earth. Let somebody call your brother or sister that. And you will try to kill them. That's just family love. That's family love 101. Respect the boundaries. I don't give a fuck how you feel about it. So I'm talking about my family. And it don't matter. You'd be like, oh, well, you said he wasn't no good. Well, goddammit, I got the right to say he wasn't no good. In my family, I can say that. Because I also know how good he is. I also know how great he or she is. See, the problem with people that want to talk shit, they don't ever want to talk about the good. They want to harp on the negative. They only want to talk about the bad. But you know, when family come through, we don't play those games. And that's because at the end of the day, we can still reflect on when he wasn't a crackhead, when he was that good unk that fixed cars, it could turn a garbage can into Stay a barbecue in grill, when he was the funny one that no matter what was going on in the family, he would come through with that smile bright as the sunshine and cheer everybody up. So that's why that's hood law. That's why y'all got to be careful when y'all speak on somebody's name about something that you perceive or think that you know or you getting part of the story. You don't know that pe person's history and that back that backstory that go with it. So, you know, you got to be careful with that. that. Like, don't break hood law. All right, so you guys just saw Drea Kelly dancing and having a good old funky time to her baby daddy's music. You know, like I said, even if she still wants to listen to the music, why does she feel the need to post this on social media? It just doesn't make any sense. But then in the same breath, she wants everybody to view her as a victim. And for some people, it's very hard to view her as a victim. You know, and I'm just so tired of this whole back and forth and a lot of the hypocrisy that's come out of this documentary. I even had one person come onto my Instagram page when I was posting the video of Drea Kelly dancing R. Kelly. And the person says that she has the right to dance to R. Kelly's music because she's a victim and she's seen the good side of R. Kelly. Which to me is complete and utter bullshit. And I replied back to this person, this is what I have to say. You know, basically I'm telling them that, okay, so you're saying that it's okay for Drea Kelly to see the good side in R. Kelly, knowing that she was a victim of his, she was abused and everything else. But to people who weren't abused by R. Kelly, who don't know this man from a can of paint, you saying people are shaming them and telling folks that they cannot separate the man from the music. So which one is it? So it's okay for Drea Kelly to be sitting here bobbing her head and dancing to happy people, but then people who have nothing to do with the case, they're supposed to delete all of R. Kelly's music and just act like he never ever existed. So do you see the hypocrisy that's coming from a lot of people online? And unfortunately with the games that Drea Kelly is playing and the things that she's doing, she's putting a bad light on the documentary. Her antics are making people look at all these women with the damn side eye. What she's doing is not a good look and it's basically staining the documentary. You have so many people looking to basically discount the documentary to go in on the documentary to dismiss the documentary andrea kelly is definitely giving them the fuel to do just that got no record all these hoes he supposed to be beat up and molested 
Why he ain't got no mug shot? The, all the mug shots I got, I know it ain't because the crackers don't want to put his ass in jail because they damn sure to put a black nigga in jail. Harvey Weinstein might not. But they want to put R. Kelly in jail, so stop all this shit by, oh, because we're black. Oh, because we're no bitch, it's because you keeping his last name, whore. Let's talk about that. R. Kelly ex-wife want to talk about all this shit that he done did to her all these years, had her hiding and feeding her under the bed with a tray. R. Kelly was sliding the tray under the bed like she was a prisoner, like the woman living under the stairs with her children. And she want us to be feeling sorry for her. Bitch, we ain't feeling sorry for you, girl. You still carrying that man's last name, girl. Is that why the police don't believe you or didn't put R. Kelly in jail? I don't. I, I mean, you got a whole reality TV show based on R. Kelly, based on being R. Kelly's wife. At the end of the day, this is my conclusion. And you guys know that I've been speaking on R. Kelly for years on this channel before it became trendy, before people was getting paid off of it. I was speaking on R. Kelly, okay? I have so many R. Kelly videos I've talked about that were demonetized and everything else. So this is nothing new here. I'm not doing this to clout chase. I'm not doing this because it's a trending topic. I've been talking and going in on R. Kelly, okay? The thing that bothers me with this entire situation, not just Drea Kelly, you know, but then also them featuring Charlemagne the God, is the hypocrisy. Even in the documentary, they were saying that, you know, black women are not seen as victims a lot of times. We're seen as being fast and wanting it. And, you know, what did she do? She thinks she's grown. We're always being shamed. We don't get the same care. We don't get the same treatment as other races of women. I think chance the rapper's statement was very telling in that documentary he basically stated that he did not believe any of those women because they were black women you know and he still chose to work with r kelly and do music with r kelly but now of course now that shit's hitting the fan everyone's trying to distance themselves in my personal opinion there was too many people involved in this documentary for mistakes like charlemagne to be in there okay it falls right into this continuum of stories that have come out around sexual misconduct sexual harassment in mainstream industries and in september we have the huge harvey weinstein articles drop which propelled this whole movement forward and r kelly doesn't get included Included in that. Jeronda Pace broke her NDA around R. Kelly, and I wanted to shine light on that and continue to keep the conversation about R. Kelly and the accusations against him in the public eye. And again, I think that goes back into this idea that black girls don't matter. They don't matter enough. And it's proven over and over again. We still socially don't perceive young black women as innocent as deserving of protection. Somehow it's their fault. When the reality is that the problem isn't the girls, the problem is the predators. You have Tarana Burke, she is the founder of Me Too, and I've talked about her previously on this channel. You know, she's talking about pulling receipts about Harvey Weinstein and all the things he's done. So she knows all the stuff that Harvey Weinstein has done and these other people. Why did she not know anything about Charlemagne the God? And why would she, Dream Hampton, and whoever else, you know, gave the okay, why would they be okay with Charlemagne the God being in here? In one breath, we say that black women are not protected, they're not seen as victims, but in the same breath, the founder of Me Too, Dream Hampton, and other people that were associated with this documentary, they didn't care about Jessica Reed's story. They didn't care about this black victim in Monk's Corner, South Carolina, and the shame and everything that she went through as a teenager. This woman was raped. She came out with her documentary. None of these people have shouted her out. Nobody has said a peep about Jessica Reed. But then in the same breath, y'all have Charlemagne on here trying to act like he's the new Malcolm X, and then he's going in on R. Kelly when he has his own case. So Mr. C was definitely right to point that out mr c told nothing but the truth he had no business being in that documentary them cutting down his parts made no sense why even include him why even tap him on the shoulder and the thing is they were also in charge of editing at any point in time they could have just edited him out altogether. and i've also noticed that charlamagne hasn't tweeted he hasn't posted anything on instagram since this documentary came out so i think that he's possibly laying low but this entire situation is not only sad but it's definitely hypocritical and i think the part that makes me sad with everything when i look back at the documentary and when I look back at how everything's playing on social media that a lot of black women have also internalized this mindset as well even in the documentary you had other black women basically going out and recruiting other black women when they knew that their situation was fucked up but they didn't care so it's like we've internalized that self-hatred we've internalized hating other women and if I have to go through a bunch of pain I have to go through a bunch of abuse you're gonna go through it too and I think that's the saddest I see it on social media I saw it in the documentary. Even with Jeronda, she said that Dominique was her friend. 
You know what I'm saying? And she's the one who got Dominique into the situation that Dominique is in. So again, not to blame the victim, not to blame Jeronda. All I'm saying is that, you know, I think a lot of us have internalized this and we had that same mentality towards each other. Look how many women in that documentary became recruiters and then in turn watch other women be put into the same situation where they were victimized and abused just like they were. They both targeted the exact demographic that they knew that nobody would care, that they knew that they could abuse and do things too and that nobody would care, nobody would bat an eyelash. Charlemagne said it himself. If you want to victimize somebody, you need to victimize a black woman because you'll get away with it. If you want to get away with sexual assault, assault a young black girl. If R. Kelly had been doing this to white women, oh my God. The fact that it's mostly young black girls that he preys on, simply nobody cares. This couldn't have been a bunch of white girls. So people like that know who they can mess with. They know who to target. They know who to abuse. So this entire situation is just really, really sad. And I think that we need to look at it deeper. And in my personal opinion, you know, I have to call out the hypocrisy on not only some of the producers, on the Me Too founder, Andrea Kelly, because we can say that we care about black women and that we want these black women protected. We want their stories told. But then we sit there and we totally ignore this black woman, Jessica Reed, and then give Charlemagne the God a platform to spew his bullshit. Meanwhile, this woman is depressed and she's going through so much, no different than the victims of R. Kelly. So make it make sense to me. How do we have Charlemagne in this documentary and then he's sitting here talking down to R. Kelly. Meanwhile, we have Jessica Reed over here and none of these people are giving a fuck about Jessica Reed or her story. Now everybody wants to play crazy and act like they didn't know and they're making it about his tweets when to me it's not about the tweets. It's about the Jessica Reed situation. At the end of the day, some of the women in that documentary were definitely survivors and I'm glad that they were able to make it out. At the end of the day, we need to stop focusing and deflecting and worry about R. Kelly, okay? That is a topic at hand. The topic at hand is R. Kelly. You know, granted, we know there's a lot of stuff going on in the industry. The whole industry, like I told you guys months ago when I was doing videos on Harvey Weinstein because I call it all out. Because I don't just sit here and just go in on the so-called black man. I address all races. I'm one of the few, if not the only black YouTubers who called out Asia Argento when it came out that she had molested and raped that young boy and tried to pay him off. I caught her out. I didn't see a lot of black folks making videos about that and calling her out and she's a white woman. You know, so missing with the whole, you're trying to take down the black man, I call out everybody. I've called out Harvey Weinstein. I've made so many videos on Harvey Weinstein. At the end of the day, I'm not deflecting. This topic is about R. Kelly and that's what needs to be addressed point blank period. So anyways, y'all, I don't want to make this video too long. I just wanted to go ahead and just, you know, kind of rant and rave and talk about what was on my mind, especially dealing with this whole Charlemagne situation. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.